There's no need to get tense. Relax with Flux Condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. Looking at our schematic, so far we've discussed the AC power cord, fuse, resistance cord replacement circuits, and resistors. We've also learned that most of the radio requires DC, and that the rectifier tube is a diode that converts AC to DC. Let's take a closer look at the rectifier tube from the top and side to see how it works. Inside the tube are three main elements, a filament, a cathode, and a plate. The filaments in each tube are powered by the resistance cord replacement circuit. On our schematic, filaments are shown separately from the other tube elements, even though they're all contained in the same glass enclosures. Filaments are sometimes called heaters because it's their job to get hot and heat the nearby cathode. Cathodes are covered with ions that burn off as negatively charged electrons when hot. The rectifier's cathode is connected to the AC power line. As it burns off electrons, the AC charge flows into the vacuum and is attracted to the plate. This creates a current that is sent to power the radio. The magic of this is that our AC power is now DC power. That's because the negatively charged cathode can release electrons, but the positively charged plate cannot. So as the two directions of alternating current reach the cathode, only the forward direction can flow, creating direct current. As you can see on the schematic, the 25Z5 rectifier tube actually has two sets of filaments, cathodes, and plates. Both sets work as described above, but the job is split between the two to better handle the high current. Before we get to the other, more complex tubes in our radio, we need to learn about some other components and principles that are at the heart of making a radio work. On the next video, we'll learn about the most talked about components in radio restoration, capacitors. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.